Welcome again to these Bible Talks. I'm glad you've joined us today and a special welcome to those who have never joined us before. Glad you're with us today. This is talk number six in a series called Bad Boys, which is based on a parable that Jesus told in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15. And today's talk is entitled, Coming Home. I want to read a few verses to you from the parable to set the scene. This is what Jesus said. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Now, I want to suggest to you that there's nothing better in all the world. There's no feeling that can compare with the feeling of coming home again after you've been away from home for a long period of time. It's all to do with coming back to a place where you belong and a place where you know you are loved and wanted and esteemed and where you are respected. And there's nothing better to compare with that sort of feeling. Well, now, this is what this young man that we read about in the parable that Jesus told used to have. He had that place of home where he was loved and respected and wanted and where he had a niche and we had a future and we had everything laid on for himself. But he threw it all away, as we know. Now, many today, of course, feel homeless in an inward way. Uh, we know the story of this young man. He had thrown it all away by saying to his father, I don't want this anymore. I want to go my own way. And so he took his father's money and he went his own way and we know the story of how he landed up in the pigsty. We've been looking at that over these past weeks. But I want to suggest that there's another way of being homeless. There's a way of being homeless that is inward. A homelessness of the spirit. A homelessness of the soul. Where you don't actually feel that you belong anyway. Of course I'm aware of the fact that talking about being homeless like this. That for many people... At home is where all their problems started, so they would never dream of getting up from where they are and going home again. And that's a sad commentary on our society today. Not all the places where we grew up was a home. Nevertheless, the idea of a home where you belong, the idea of a home where you are wanted, where you are loved, where you are esteemed and where you can grow, that is planted deep down within you. It's planted deep down in your heart and in your soul. And the young man we're talking about left a home like that, where he had everything laid on for him, and where he could have grown and developed into a, into a very, very special human being. He threw it all away to go and to follow his own autonomous dream, which landed up, as you know, in disaster. But there came a moment when he came to his senses, you remember, when Jesus tells us that he came to his senses, he came to himself, he suddenly realized who he was and what he was and what was happening to him and how he had wandered away and lost perspective and how he had entered into a different kind of reality for his life and how wrong he was. He came to that moment where he came to his senses. And he came to his senses not only because of his circumstances and his sense of despair, but because something was working inside of him that brought him to a point where he realized that he wasn't where he ought to be. It was an awakening and an awakening of his understanding. Now, unless we have that awakening of understanding, we'll never seek for our true home. But many people do have that awakening. Many people do know deep down inside that they're not where they ought to be. There is a kind of an awakening there and a longing to know which path to take to find my way to my true home. Perhaps you feel that way yourself. You may feel homeless in your own soul, in your own spirit, in your, in, deep down in your emotions. You may feel like you don't belong where you are. And perhaps life has disappointed you and all the hopes and dreams you had when you were younger have never been fulfilled at all. And perhaps you're feeling full of despair at the moment. And maybe it's because you have never ever come to know that your true home lies with your Father in heaven. 
there's a God in heaven who calls himself Father. And uh, he wants you to be part of his family. And when you come to him, you come to your true home. And as long as you're away from him, no matter what we create for ourselves, we're not in our true home at all. Now this young man who was in the pigsty came to himself and he wanted to go back home to his true home. But you remember the story how he was defeated and he was dejected, he was humiliated. And uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he felt that they'd burnt all his bridges behind him. So how would he be received when he got up to go back to go and find his father and to say to his father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Make me as one of your servants. He was going to go abjectly to his father. How would he be received? Well, in this parable, we are told how he was received. And the first thing I want to point out to you is that the young man who went home was expected. He was expected by his father. It's a wonderful thing to be expected. I'm expecting my brother, son, mother, father, my sweetheart, my wife, my husband to be home for Christmas. I'm expect. I'm expecting them. And you know, it's a wonderful thing to know that God expects you to come home. He wants you home. He expects you to come home. He's not holding out his arm against you saying, don't come near me. He wants you home. And so we read in this, in this parable that while the boy was a long way off, the father saw him, which indicates that the father was looking down that long road from his house and maybe doing so every day. This is a parable, but if it was a story, you can imagine this father hoping every day that he would see his son walking home and coming back to where he truly belonged. Now, for many of us, there are the first stirrings of longing. We can't always pinpoint them or tell why we feel like that, but there are stirrings of longing within us for something more than what we've experienced in life. And some of us may have struggled with doubts about whether God should play a role or not play a role. And some of us are overwhelmed by the failures we've experienced in our own lives. But I want to suggest to you that all of those things may constitute a kind of a stirring up that is driving you to believe that you are not where you ought to be, that you belong somewhere else, and that you are not in the place where you really were meant to be. You've got a different destiny. You should have a different home where you are wanted and where you are expected and where you'll be re- you'll receive a welcome. So all of those feelings that you experience in life that are negative and all those feelings that drive you down may all be part and parcel of your divine Father in heaven controlling circumstances to make you say to yourself, do I really belong here where I am? Should I not get up and go back to my Father's house? And you'll discover if you do that, that you've been expected by a loving, wonderful Heavenly Father. The second thing I want to point out to you is that when he went home, he experienced compassion. Because the father saw him coming down the street and ran and had compassion on him. Let me tell you about this idea of compassion. In the Bible, the Bible was written, the New Testament was written in Greek. And Greek's a wonderful expressive language and it's got different words to describe sometimes the same sort of feeling and so is the idea of compassion or pity or mercy there are different words to describe it there's one word to describe pity there's one word to describe sympathy another word to describe mercy or kindness another word to describe uh, dealing gently with people but but none of these words are the same word that is used here when this father has compassion on his son No, no, this word that is used here is a word that means the deepest feelings of the heart, the liver, and the lungs. It's a word that that describes the deepest, deepest feelings that could possibly exist in a person for another person. And that's the compassion that God had on this boy. And so this boy experiences compassion when he comes home. And how does the father express this compassion to him? Well, we read that, not only did he have compassion, but he ran down the road to his son. You know, you may think nothing of that, but if you were living in Jesus' day, you would have been shocked because in Jesus' time, no older person ever ran. It was considered undignified, but Jesus deliberately shocks his audience when he tells this parable and gives the picture of the father girding up his loins and running down the road to meet the son who had humiliated him and defied him in front of the whole village and to welcome him home again. And the father runs to meet the son to indicate how much he wanted him 
home again. And so here's this boy who doesn't know how he's going to be welcomed home, and he's welcomed home in this immense way. And I want to suggest to you today that the Heavenly Father who ran for the Son is the same Heavenly Father who will run for you. If you make any move to come home again, you will discover that God's compassion is for you, and you will discover that God's expecting you, and you will discover that there's a heavenly meaning in this earthly story when it says the father ran to, to meet his son because the father runs to meet you too. It's not like God sits in heaven on his throne waiting pompously for you to come to him abjectly. Rather, the father is waiting for you to be so sorry for your sins that he can run to you and throw his arms around you and say, welcome home, all is forgiven and be part of my family. And the Father runs to meet you in that way. Well, now, how, in what way does the Father run to meet us? In what way can we say that this Father runs to, to meet a person like you, a person like me, who wants to come home again? In what way can we, can we say that happens? Well, to understand that, you've got to go back to the story of Jesus. And you'll remember that the Lord Jesus Christ is the one person in the world who never committed a single sin. And he claimed to be the Son of God. And you will remember that one night he was taken from a garden of prayer and he was taken by his enemies and he was taken into a trial by the Roman leaders of the city of Jerusalem at that time. And there he was found guilty of crimes he never committed. And because they were colonized by the Romans, the, Jew, the Jewish Sanhedrin who had taken him now presented him to Pilate and Pontius Pilate uh, questioned him, could find nothing wrong with him. And then Pi Pilate sent him off to the Jewish king, who was a sort of a puppet king. And the King Herod then questioned Jesus, but received no satisfaction and sent him back to Pontius Pilate. And Pilate could find nothing wrong with him, presents him to the gathered mobs of people and says to them, what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? And they shout out, crucify him, crucify him, because they've been whipped up by Jesus' enemies in the crowds. And Pilate is completely bemused by this because he can find nothing wrong with Jesus. And so he says, I'll let Barabbas go. Barabbas was a thug and a murderer who was a, a convicted felon and a, and a criminal. And I'll, I'll let Jesus go and you can have Barabbas. And they say, we'll have Barabbas to be released and we want Jesus to be crucified. Crucify him, crucify him, they shouted. And so Pilate, aware of political consequences, he gave Jesus over to them. Jesus was beaten and whipped, as we know. And then he was taken up the Via Dolorosa and laid down on the hill. And his arms were pinned to a crossbar. And he was raised up on a cross to hang between heaven and earth, the Son of God, a spectacle to the mocking world. And there the Lord Jesus Christ hung for three hours. And during those three hours, he cried out at one point, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that moment, as the Lord Jesus Christ was bearing the sins of the world, in that moment he was bearing all of the punishment that we would have we would have borne for ourselves, for our own sins and our own failures. He was bearing it in our place as our substitute. And the wrath of God has been poured out upon him. And as the Lord Jesus cried out those words, that is God running to meet you, my friend. It's God's son on the cross. It is God. Son, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. God bearing the judgment of God on the cross. God taking it upon himself, running down the road to meet you, to say, all is well, all will be forgiven. Come to me and come home again. And so when you hear about the Lord Jesus Christ dying on the cross, you need to know that is God's way of running to meet you and to throw his arms around you and to plant a kiss on your cheek. That is God's way of doing it for you and for me. And so this boy comes up the road and receives a welcome that he never expected at all. And his father puts his arms around him and he pours compassion upon his son and kisses him on the cheek. Now, you know, the kiss on the cheek is a very important thing. You know that in the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament, in in fact, all through history, people have kissed each other. And there's the kiss of, of, of friendship. And there's the, 
the the uh, the kiss of 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 a lover there is there is the 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 kiss of of a of a relationship and there's also the kiss of a betrayer like Judas kissed Jesus Christ but this kiss that the father plants on the cheek of his son is the kiss of welcome it's the kiss of saying come home it's the kiss of opening the doors to the heavenly home is the kiss of saying come out of the darkness come out of where you are come out of all that false stuff that you believed and come and put your faith and trust in me and receive my life and my light and a new life for yourself in this world and the hope of a world to come well now when you come to God you receive that kiss in a spiritual sense he touches your soul you will feel like you received a heavenly kiss he touches you deep down where no one else can touch you, forgives all your sins and welcomes you back home again. And I hope that you who are listening may feel to yourself, well, that's for me and that's what I want. I also want to ask those of you who have been Christians for a long time, can you remember the day when you first came to know the Lord Jesus Christ? And wasn't it like walking into the arms of a father? Wasn't it like being embraced by by somebody you didn't know who loved you with an immense love? Wasn't it a kind of a sense of relief? Wasn't it a sense of privilege that you suddenly came into a knowledge that you never had before? You remember that. And you should share that with everybody that you possibly can. What a welcome you receive when you come to the Father. When the son met the Father on the road, he said, he, he, he wanted to say, Father, I have sinned. Father, I'm not worthy. But before you could say any of those things, the father's arms were around him and he was kissed. And the father put his arm around him to take him back to his home again. That's a very, very great privilege. No one will be rejected. No one, my dear friend. You may say, oh, I'm too bad for that. No one wants me. Yes, God wants you. No one will ever have me back for the things that I've done. I'm not denying the things you've done may have been bad, but God wants you back. And when you go to the cross, you will discover the Lord Jesus Christ died for every sin we have ever committed. Oh, the cross is a very great thing. And we should never forget that that is God's answer to our problems. That is God's way of saying, I love you so much. That's God's way of saying, I'm running down the road to meet you. That is God's way of saying that. Well, now, um, you may be lost and you may have forfeited a lot of your privileges and you may feel like there's no hope for you I want to say to you there is hope please come to your senses say to yourself I will arise and I will go to my father and when you do that you will discover the father will receive you with a kiss but you know being welcomed by the father with that compassion is not the only privilege that this young son received when he went home there's more to come and we'll learn more about the privileges of belonging to the Father when we meet again next week. Hope you'll join us and God bless you.